I'm Steve Hilton. I've been involved with the Bristol and Bath Creative R&D program pretty much since it first started, so for sort of three years or more. I'm going to talk about three pieces of work that I've done as part of the program. I'm going to start by um, talking about my role as a digital placemaking fellow in Bristol, where I looked at the history of how digital infrastructure has developed within the city and how it's been important to shaping the city's current identity. I'm then going to switch my focus to Bath and I'm going to talk about a project that we delivered called Connecting Bath that looked at digital infrastructure in Bath but also then considered a, a number of future scenarios or visions about how connectivity might add to the future of the place. And I'm finishing with a further project that I worked on in Bath called the Bath Challenge. And this sought to explore why creative tech doesn't or, or, or hasn't had the same level of prominence in conversations in the city as perhaps it has in other equivalent places and indeed what we might seek to do to remedy that. As I talk I'm going to draw references to this question of how important is it where we are. So does, does place matter? And you'll hear me say that it doesn't, you'll hear me say that it does and ultimately, you'll have to hear what I conclude. So casting my mind back to when I first became a digital placemaking fellow, this was just before the pandemic had become a thing. And um, what an extraordinary time to be working on a project where we were considering connectivity, digital and place. As we entered lockdown, of course, the whole of our lives became primarily focused around digital as an access channel, whether we were shopping online, talking to our friends or family online, whether our kids were in school trying to learn online, whether we were accessing entertainment online, the digital world became the world and the physical world retreated. And of course, when I say we, I'm also really conscious that it wasn't we as in everybody. Issues of digital exclusion and digital poverty weren't new, but the pandemic certainly brought them to the fore. Not having access to connectivity or sufficient data or sufficient devices or, or, or skills in order to make use of those things. It became clear that that wasn't a luxury, really. That was a lifeline and too many people um, were not able to access those things at the most important time of their lives. My own work focused on how digital has developed in Bristol over, well, I would say over a century, which I know is before digital was a thing. I produced a report called Rebooting the Digital City, which is available on the um, Bristol and Bath R&D website start the story with the creation of the first telephone exchange in Bristol more than a hundred years ago and it still sits there, still, still there in Bristol on a street called Telephone Exchange Avenue which just goes to show that these decisions about infrastructure have very 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 long tails. But I was interested in how um, physical access to digital infrastructure had been important in developing the story of Bristol. I focused in on a number of different projects, including um, a network called BNet, which was originally developed by Rediffusion as a cable wireless, as in radio um, uh, network in the, in the 30s and 40s. And what you can see is that over subsequent decades, that network which was very much of Bristol. That network was used by communities to support a really wide range of different initiatives from a um, early local TV channel in the um, 80s and 90s to Bristol Wireless's work on community networks to um, uh, Bristol is open as a, as a, a state-of-the-art um, smart city testbed. 
And something has been lost as we've moved to a globally connected world. Clearly there are massive strengths being able to interchange and connect with people digitally around the world. It is it is amazing, it still amazes me. But at the same time we've lost that sense of connection to the physical assets. The networks are no longer ours to play with. And um, I guess the report concluded that in order to shift away from a reliance on global tech. We need to think again about what the assets and the infrastructure are that are available to, to us within the, within the city and within the place. It's great being able to say, hey Google or hey Siri, it would be even better to be able to say, hey Bristol or hey Bath. The Connecting Bath project looked at digital infrastructure through a slightly different lens. We were interested in how other cities have used digital connectivity to enhance their sense of place. And we asked whether um, Bath could learn from or emulate some of those tactics. So, you know, would Bath benefit from having a really state of the art connected venue for performance? A place where people could experiment with the technology in terms of uh, different audiences, different ways of connecting with those audiences both physically and virtually. We explored the idea that um, uh, what Bath is missing is a digital test bed, a place where the universities and uh, small businesses can experiment with new technologies, new applications in real world settings and that that um, sense of the place as a place of experimentation becomes part of the norm, becomes part of the culture. We also explored the idea of Bath as a smart city, um, clearly as a um, historic Roman, Georgian, UNESCO, um, world leading visitor attraction. There are huge issues around how to manage the city and its buildings. So the idea of having um, real-time data to enable better flow of vehicles and pedestrians in order to um, keep um, on top of the maintenance issues to do with the precarious sort of nature of a lot of the historic buildings in the city seemed a really sensible thing. But what we concluded in the Connecting Bath report is that the successful places don't just do one of those things. They do all of those things, perhaps not at the same time, but over a period of time, they invest in capabilities that allow them to develop all of those different strands, which is clearly more challenging, but it is the thing that makes a, a really successful digital place distinctive. And then finally, I wanted to talk about the um, Bath Challenge. Um, this was an arts led project. Um, and it looked to use different sorts of methods to explore this issue of why creative tech doesn't necessarily have the same resonance in conversations in Bath as, as in other places. We worked with artists, um, we uh, used walking as a method of um, talking and data collecting. And I guess where we got to with the project is recognising that Bath has a unique opportunity to tell a different story about the value of creative tech. It's easy, perhaps even lazy, to fall back on the idea that digital is about jobs and growth and investment. And, and clearly to a large extent it is, you know, you need only look at Bristol and the way that it's managed to attract in highly skilled employees, to retain graduates, to become a location where business who, who are in the digital world want to locate. So I'm not, I'm not saying that that doesn't have value, but it's not the only value. And what we started to explore through the um, Bath Challenge is what some of those other values might be. So how can digital contribute to the health and well-being of the city? How can it help Bath with its ambitions around being sustainable and um, net zero by 2030. And I think where that takes us to is a, dif a different sort of conversation. Rather than just thinking about tech in purely economic terms, we start to think it mu about it much more in terms of a human reciprocal ar arrangement or agreement with, with place. And for me, increasingly, 
when I talk about place, what, I, what I'm meaning is, is place in terms of the physical environment, nature, the, 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 the landscape that makes up a place. And so as part of the challenge, we looked at this area that you're in now, Locksbrook, and the potential to connect Locksbrook and the ambition for a future digital campus with the work that's going on around the Bath Art Depot to turn Western Ireland into a different sort of community run arts space rather than a bus depot as it currently is. Um, to think about the space as an interconnection with communities such as Locksbrook um, and to think about its location on the river as a corridor. And for me that's a very exciting proposition for Bath. The historic centre is great but, and it attracts in huge amounts of people but it also pushes out lots of people for um, the opposite reasons. And so creating a new focus outside of the city centre on the edge of the city feels like a very exciting and worthwhile thing to pursue. So to finish off, I think I've said, um, I think I've said that um, a place can be unimportant because we've learned that we can function anywhere within the world with a Wi-Fi connection at least. But in my heart, um, the real opportunity is about using digital to build a proper reciprocal relationship with the place where you are. And that means stepping outside of easily um, described opportunities like the economy and really questioning what it is that we think is desirable and valuable about being connected with other people in a, in a, in a particular location. And for me, as I've said, that takes me towards recognising the importance of the environment nature and future sustainability and that for me is where I think Bath has a particularly amazing opportunity to use its creative tech in a different way. Thank you very much, I hope you dig out the reports on the B&B &B website and um, enjoy the rest of your time at Logsbrook, thank you.